Today I'll demonstrate how to use MATLAB and the Partial Differential Equation Toolbox in order to compute the numerical solution to the diffusion equation on an irregularly shaped two-dimensional domain. The primary goal of this video is to exhibit a consistent workflow I'll follow when solving problems of this nature. Here U represents the concentration of a dissolved solute that is allowed to undergo molecular diffusion in the domain F1. This is modeled by the diffusion equation. No solute is permitted to flow into or out of the domain through pieces E2 through E5 of its boundary. This is modeled with a Neumann boundary condition. Pieces E1 and E6 are the reentrant edges of the boundary, and solute concentration is held to zero here. This is modeled with Dirichlet conditions. An initial Gaussian profile is provided for the initial concentration. I prefer to solve PDEs from a script rather than to use MATLAB's interactive PDE tool. So in order to make sense of the script that I use and how it relates to my workflow, we'll go through it piece by piece. Now, in order to compute a numerical solution to the, this problem in MATLAB, I first clear all data, command line history, and then close any existing windows. Then, to begin solving the problem, I create space for the PDE model using the MATLAB create PDE function. Next, I create a geometric model for the computational domain for the problem. Earlier, we saw this as the polygon F1. Modeling a 2D geometry in MATLAB takes some work, but our polygonal domain is fairly simple. MATLAB uses a column vector to model polygons, circles, ellipses, squares, and triangles, etc. To establish a polygon, we first supply a 2 to the first row of the column vector. This specifies that we are forming a polygon. The next entry is the number of edges. 6 in our case. From there, we first list the x-coordinates of all the vertices, followed by the y-coordinates in corresponding order. Once complete, we pass this array together with a set formula and a namespace array to the decompose solid geometry or DECSG command. This sounds more complex than it is but searching for create CSG geometry at the command line and MATLAB's online help will help you to get up to speed with the details. A namespace array is an array of names of the individual components in a geometric model, while a set formula is a textual description of how these components are combined together through unions, intersections, and relative complements in order to form potentially complex geometries. We'll look at examples like this in future videos, but presently our geometric model consists only of our single six-sided polygon. Therefore, both the namespace matrix and the set formula contain the same information, a name for our polygon. Once we've passed the model, namespace, and set formula to DECSG, it returns a geometry matrix, DL, to us. We'll attach this to our PDE model shortly, but now is a good time to plot our geometric model with PDE gplot. This is ordinarily something that you would do before even worrying about solving your partial differential equation because it will give you a visual representation of what your computational domain looks like and more importantly, how all of the boundaries are labeled so that when you're ready to go and set boundary conditions, you'll know which boundary is named with which label. The geometry from edges function is what we use to attach the geometry matrix to our PDE model. Next, I'll specify boundary conditions for our model. I'll use the apply boundary condition function to do this, and I'll perform the task in two steps. This is because I have imposed Neumann conditions on edges 2 through 5 and Dirichlet conditions on edges 1 and 6. If you search for apply boundary condition in MATLAB's online help, you'll find some details on how to apply fairly generalized versions of both Neumann and Dirichlet conditions. 
we are specifying only the simplest version of both kinds of boundary condition, where with the Neumann condition, we are using a pure no flux condition. So we must set G and Q equal to zero. And the Dirichlet condition, we're just specifying a homogeneous boundary. So we're setting U to zero. Next, we specify the coefficients of our partial differential equation model. MATLAB allows you to do this in very general ways, but I am starting with a comparatively simple partial differential equation for this example. Recall that we'll be solving the diffusion equation, and the only coefficient in that differential equation is d, the molecular diffusion coefficient. We'll be setting that to a value of 0 0.05. If you search for specify coefficients in MATLAB's online help, you'll find that it allows you to specify the coefficients of a general partial differential equation model that's second order in time and space. Um, M, D, C, A, and F can be functions of the independent variables, the dependent variable U, and lower order derivatives. However, in our specific case, we'll be setting um, lowercase d equal to 1, that's the coefficient of the first time derivative, and c equal to 0 0.05 in order to reflect the value of our molecular diffusion coefficient, capital D, from our model. Back in our MATLAB program, these particular parameter values are set as ordered pairs within the specify coefficients function. Next, I'll generate a finite element mesh on our computational domain. I'll use the generate mesh function to do this with a maximum edge length set to 0 0.1 within the mesh. Afterwards, I plot the mesh. Since I'm solving a time-dependent problem, I must also create an array of times at which I will form approximate solutions to the problem. The last step I need to perform before solving the problem is to specify initial condition for the solution over the domain. This requires the definition of an initial condition function at the end of the script. Any initial condition function must accept a location variable as an input that it uses to access points within the computational domain. When this function is defined, its handle may be passed to the set initial conditions function back in the main body of the script. This particular initial condition function just sets an initial Gaussian profile for the solution to the problem. And here once again is how to pass a function handle for the initial conditions function that I've called ut0 fun to the set initial conditions command of MATLAB. I'm finally at a point where I can solve the differential equation with the solve PDE function. The spatial data is then extracted from the solution for visualization. In order to visualize the solution, I use the PDE plot function to plot the solution surface at each time step within a loop. This is actually a pretty slow process to render, so I also save each frame into an AVI file for later viewing. Now, when I run this script from start to finish, we'll see that it's going to produce a plot of the computational domain. Then it will produce a plot of the computational domain with the finite element mesh imposed on top of it. And then finally, after a little while of computation, it starts to render an animation of the solution uh, over time. So I return to MATLAB, scroll to the top of my script and press the run button and we see that my computational domain appears shortly. And a little while after that, both the finite element mesh and then the animation of the solution 
uh, appear on the screen. This solution animation will run for quite a while and we'll watch it for a little bit, but then I'm going to accelerate the rate at which it's displayed because it just asymptotically starts to reach an equilibrium state and it, and it does it a little bit slowly because of the time it takes to render these animations. Um, that's pretty much it for solving the heat equation or the diffusion equation using MATLAB in the Partial Differential Equation Toolbox. If you're viewing this video from the Mathematical Sciences Research Launchpad, you've probably already found a copy of the MATLAB code for this example. But if you're viewing it on YouTube, I'll put a link to the file in the description of the video.